Oh, great. Uh, yeah, Paul. Hey. There we are. Look. Oh, that's splendid. It'll have that nice peppery taste. Yeah, yeah, really. it? Look, just how it used to be. <laughs> Wonderful. Really good. It's good, strong, proper flavour. Peppery, peppery. Mm. And it's nice running water here, so we're quite safe. Right. <laughs> This is magnificent here, but why have you brought me? Well, for the good of your soul, Jennifer, how yeah. beautiful it is. Do you think this is safe down here? Yes, why wouldn't it be? Well, I don't know, we might meet the Quamma. No, this is the old Rome road to Strontian, so if we keep going down here, we'll get to the loggers. What loggers? The ones we get to cook for, the lumberjacks. Oh, none of the lumberjacks. Hello. Rather nice looking fishermen down there, too. Nice, yeah. A bit slippy, be careful. Morning. Morning. Mind this guy with the train tra easel. Ooh, sorry. Morning. Get up here. Oh, hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. What a pretty lineup. <laughs> well, we've come to cook your harvest supper for the end of this particular lot. And I gather one of you's got a croft we can use to cook it. Yep, that's me. Oh, great. Would you be a dear and show us the way? You could pop on the back of my bike. Yep. That'd be great. Would you be happy there? That should be. OK. Be comfortable. Comfortable? Hang on, because there's nothing to hold you there if we go off to a nasty bump. OK. She took it off so that handsome young men would have to hang on to her. Sounds wonderful. Quite That's great. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Charming. Lovely place. Wonderful place to be. Good heavens, look at the kitchen. It's fast. I must say, it's very well equipped. Yeah, it's rather jammy for a croft. I thought it would be just a sort of little, you know, one of those little coal fire things. Anyway, what I'm going to make is a good hearty pulo pot, that, that wonderful nourishing dish uh, invented by Henry of Navarre because he wanted all his subjects to have a chicken in their pot every Sunday, which was a good idea, and I think it, it worked for quite a long time. And he was killed by a crazed vegetarian. Typical. Well, he was killed. He... <laughs> Possibly it was by a crazed vegetarian. Looking a gift horse in the mouth. Indeed. So what we're going to do now is actually stuff the chicken. And first of all, we want breadcrumbs, which I've got soaked in milk, which I must squeeze out. This is just to keep it moist. And plop it in. Then I've got egg yolks for binding purposes. And about four tablespoons of parsley. That'll give it a colour and a flavour. Then good old garlic, of course. Do you think they do garlic up here? Well, we'll see what happens. Don't tell. No, no. Now, a good little bowl of delicious chopped gammon, well seasoned with pepper, and a bit of salt, but not too much because of the gammon. My dear little nutmeg. Good scrape of nutmeg. And then I'm going to stir in the chopped livers, which gives a very good flavour. Mix that all up. Now we stuff the chicken. Push it to the back. I'm trying to get as much as you can in. I wouldn't mind having much bigger ones. I'll have to do several of these. 
Yes, that won't go very far, will it? Mm. I'd probably eat one each. And what I'll do is, I would just put a slice there through the skin and shove the Pope's nose in. I wonder why they call it the Pope's nose. I expect it was rude. It was probably heretical or something. I'm sure it was frightfully rude. I just wondered, wondered which bit of rude it was. <laughs> then we'll truss it and we can hold it together with these excellent bands. And that's kept tidy. That's all right. Now, I've got here boiling in this splendid pan my lovely broth, which will give a lovely flavour. Got a bit of celery, bouquet garni, onion, with a couple of cloves stuck into it. And we'll pop this in. There, now that'll simmer away. So I'll leave that there and prepare some vegetables to add to it. So you, you can carry on, dear, if you need anything of the oven or anything. Yes, thank you. I'm making watercress mousse. With a lovely watercress, proper. That's right. It might be perhaps a little dainty for, for the lumberjacks, but with this beautiful watercress, I couldn't resist it. And I've been chopping up the watercress very finely. And I've got here some ricotta cheese that will hold the mousse. This is a non-cooked mousse. The trouble with cooked mousses is they tend to be doing, 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 unless you're very careful. Because the watercress is quite bitter, I'm just going to add about half a spoonful of sugar and an egg yolk. Not many will get a mousse like that with that real watercress. No, indeed. So just mix the egg yolk into it and some salt and pepper. Not too much, because you don't want to spoil the delicate flavour. And the zest of a lemon. I had a terrible feeling we weren't going to find any lemons. But luckily there were plenty. Well, I think they're not as barbaric up here as you think they are, Jennifer, in among the hill tribes. Uh, there we are. And the juice of half a lemon. There we are. Mix that all up. And now I'm going to mix in the watercress, quite a lot of watercress. See how small the leaves are on that, but they do have a wonderful flavour. They're sort of member of the nasturtium family. Peppery. Yep. And I've got some egg whites that I've beaten already. Whisk them a bit more. There you are. You see, it's nice and stiff here. Stiff peaks. And I'm going to fold this in to the watercress mixture and make sure you fold it in well and you must use a metal spoon for it. Mm. Jennifer, just behind you there's some gelatin softening. You wouldn't be an angel and pass it to me, would you? Yes, of course. All nice and liquid. Good, lovely. Just put it down there, that's great. Just drizzle it in. Fold it in as you go, so it doesn't have a chance to set. And now, here I've got some little moulds. There we are. And I've just lined each of them with some cling film, so that when the mousses are set, they will come out easily. And I'm just going to spoon the mixture into the moulds. Dainty little creatures for the tough old lumberjacks. They're not as sort of big and brawny as I expected them to be. I thought they'd be sort of... Ugh. Well, I think it's the... Um, they you all use chainsaws now. They don't need the muscle. No, they don't yeah. need the brawn. They just go... Bzzz everywhere. <coughs> what are you going to do with all those veg? They're going, they're going in to join my chicken. And they'll be the vegetable that goes with it. And by the time these are cooked, the chicken will be cooked, so then it can all be ladled out together. Really, when you come to think of it, it is very like the Scottish cockaliki. But without the barley. Yeah, but I don't like barley. Nasty. It's yes. sort of slippery. Because you don't like slippery, do you? Yeah. yeah, that'll make a fine great dish. Now they can go on cooking until the chicken is ready and the vegetables will be ready. Yeah, it's been lovely for them. 
But you'll be surprised how much they like these dainty little mooses, I bet you. And serve them with a few prawns. I mean, I'll just fill the cling film over. And then I'll chill these and then turn them out for, uh, for a nice starter. You know that um, bridge we came over after the drove road? The pretty little one. That's the one. Yes. And you remember the fisherman we waved at? Yes. Well, I thought he was quite attractive, really. Oh, you would. <laughs> so I thought, as there's this fishing rod knocking around here left by Richard, I thought we might go and try a hand at a little fishing. Pray do. Well, I thought you'd like to come too, as chaperone. It's very wet. Well, you can sit under an umbrella or something. Come on, be a sport. Lovely, lovely. What next? <laughs> if I try a bit of fishing. Yes, let's see what we can catch. Oh, looks very foolhardy. Well, not if I catch a fish, it won't be. Don't fall in. Now, I'll try not to. Not had a lot of practice at this. Well, I'll help you with your casting. OK, right. so if you take the rod in your right hand and take the slack in your yes. left, let me show you how the action works. So if you pull it back, and you count to two when it comes back, huh? and shoot it out. What is he doing? Have you got the action? <laughs> yes, he's teaching me how to fish, Jennifer. Are you comfortable about it? Yes. This wind doesn't help. It looks help. Like about to but, right, now, you. Push it out. Now leave it out. Let the fly come round. Keep a firm hold of this and the tip down slightly. You've got to stay in contact with the fly. Right. Would you like a go at this, Jennifer? I don't have weight, as I'm glad to say. <laughs> God, the weather's really coming in. I mean, I've yes, just put my hat on. You are brave. Yes, well, one has to be in these matters. OK, let's see this action again. Let's see it. You're getting good at this. Yes. You've done it before. No, but I can use a whip very well. <laughs> OK, well, let's... I'll leave you to just go on. And let it come round in the water and then just... If you, okay. see, if you see that flurry of activity... Strike. How long do you think it's going to take? Until I catch a fish? Who ah. knows, Jennifer? But we'll keep trying. I may never get one. Where to say Peter? He'll hold some fishing. Ooh, yes. What do I do? That's it. A hit. Yep. I think we've got one. What you do I do? One. Reel it in. That's it. Bring it in. It's not very big. No. Hey, think... wonderful! Bring him in, bring him towards me. There, there he is. goes. Goodbye, little fishy. How big is it? Not big enough, Jennifer. I'll have to come back in a few years. I've got a few fish here. Have that you? you can have, yeah. Oh, how sweet. Hey, look, Jennifer. Look what my new friend's given us. Terrific. Thank you very much. My what pleasure. a lovely gentleman you are. Fancy what's it, Peter? Who knows? <laughs> sea trout. How I love sea trout. So much nicer than salmon. I love it even more than sea bass, especially when it's given to me by a handsome fisherman. <laughs> there you are, look at that. You're Isn't that lovely? A perfect specimen, just the right size. Mm. Wonderful. And what I'm going to do with it is cook it in rock salt, which is a very simple way of doing it. Uh, it keeps all the juices in the fish. Uh, it's difficult to, to go wrong with it, and it looks very dramatic. Now I'm going to rub the inside cavity with salt and pepper, just the inside cavity, and I'm going to put into the cavity some fennel. It can be fennel the herb or it can be the 
chop tops of um, sprouting bulb fennel. Well, if you didn't have it, you could use perno. I suppose one could. Is one more likely to have perno about one, I wonder? Yes, quite often. I've always got a bottle of that in the cupboard. I've <laughs> always got a, a bunch of fennel. <laughs> and now, for the sea salt. There we are, there's my pan. And this is the coarse sea salt that you get. And I'm going to make a layer of that on the base of my baking tray. It's rather fun, this. Isn't it? Yes. yes. It was rather rustic and go <laughs> really. I remember the first sea trout I ever caught. It was in Ireland when I was a little girl and we were out fishing and um, I caught this fish and I'm so excited. It's a little like today and even more humiliating. It was that big. A minnow. And they made me throw it back. Aww. And I had all sorts of visions of having it stuffed and put on a board. No oh, wonderful. And put the fish on the salt and then just heap more salt over the top. And it doesn't matter if the head and the tail protrude a bit. And bank it up round the fish. And then I'm just going to sprinkle a few drops of water on the top so that it'll help the salt to cohede until the juices start running because you don't want it sliding off the fish. There we are, that's done. And then I'm going to put it in, in this instance, the top oven of the agar for about 40 minutes. There we go. And with that, I'm going to serve that delicious but very simple and oh so easily ruined sauce, beurre blanc. But actually a beurre blanc is terribly easy to make. Oh, the most wonderful of sauces. It's another miracle of the kitchen. It is wonderful. And here I've got some shallots which I've finely chopped. And I'm going to cover them with two-thirds white wine to a third good white wine vinegar. There we are. And a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'm just going to put this on and cook it until the liquid has reduced and just moistens and barely covers the shallots. And Jennifer's doing all sorts of things. I'm doing a large luscious pudding for the nice uh, loggers. What I've done is I've got these little peaches. I've taken the stones out and peeled them. And what I'm going to do now is make a lovely paste to put in the cavities. Now I've got these ratafia biscuits, which I shall pound into a powder. What is the difference, really, between a ratafia biscuit and a macaroon? You yeah. say ratafia, and I say ratafia. Well, indeed. <laughs> Which whichever's right correct. now, I don't know. I once had great trouble with the little ratafias, because I did a receipt for a lemon posset. And that's another miracle thing, you know, where it thickens by the lemon juice. And you're meant to put the little ratafia biscuits in, and they're all meant to amalgamate. Now, I would have thought, perfectly safe for anybody. And I got an infuriated letter from a reader saying that not only had he wasted two pounds of raspberries, but the, but the vicar's bridge work had been broken. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible tale. Dreadful. Good Lord, what is it, Vicar? Is it the bridge work that's holding <laughs> you back? Or your collar? Yes, right. So I've got these two, a pulverised steak, and I'm going to add a spoonful of demerara. And to moisten it and make it into a paste, a little bit of Cointreau, which will give it a good old flavour. <laughs> what do you sound like? <laughs> Well, it sounds like you're about to take off. Or Thomas, the tank engine, that's me. Then we'll fill the little holes with this paste. Dinky, dinky little peaches, dinky little mooses. For the dainty little lumberjacks, it's marvellous, isn't it? <laughs> we have to get them to sing. I am a lumberjack, I don't care. <laughs> that's the foggy foggy do, isn't it? No, they wear high heels and... Panties and a bra. <laughs> I wish I were a girly, just like my dear papa. <laughs> yes, I think they may get chased off the island. I think they're probably too young to know the song. Yes, like policemen. Yeah, we're so old. 
You might all speak for yourself. Well, I am. There we are. They're all nicely filled. And guess what I'm going to do now? Cover them in cream. What, the lumberjack? <laughs> no. <laughs> the peaches, the peaches. Well, I'm sure your pudding will be a great success. It'll be lovely and sweet, and the Scots have a very sweet tooth. They love sweet things. In fact, in the old days, it used to be their 21st birthday present to have all their teeth out so they wouldn't have any trouble with it at all. I've not heard that one, Jennifer. I think that's anti-Scots propaganda. My no, God. no, no. I've often heard it, really. Now, cover this fine mess in more demerara. Rather like a... A brulee. Now it's fun time. I've got this lovely little instrument. What is that? It's my blowtorch. There's no grill here. No. I don't know how to use them, but we'll try. Now, no. I wonder if you would... I'm going to hold it. Would you light it? Um, yes, Jennifer. I'm slightly frightened of it. You're slightly frightened of it. I'm at the sharp end. Just call me Rome, dear Nero, <laughs> yes, quite. <laughs> hey, I'm Matilda. Yes. That, that point it at the thing. Then we'll do a lovely, lovely bubbly brew. I prefer a good old grill, frankly. Well, I'll hold it a bit closer. That's it, you see. Now it's bubbling. I'm just being too cautious with it. Blast away! Blast away! Yeah, I think that's all right. Yes, that looks fine. There we are. Quite a little weapon. Yes, I think I'd stick to the bike if I was you. No, oh, I just need a little practice. Uh, yes. What are, you, <laughs> what are you finishing off? I'm about to put the butter into my beurre blanc. Whisk into it these cubes of cold butter, a handful at a time. The, the trick of this sauce is that you must wait until the first lot are finished and mixed in properly before you add another handful. And just keep whisking it. Patience and perseverance made a bishop of his reverence. Is that what your nanny used to say to you? No, I've never heard it before. My nanny's more likely to say... <laughs> Didn't you have a... An English nanny. Yes, I, I didn't care for her at all after after our lovely Chinese armour. This nasty, starched monster. And to us, with this terrible smell, probably Dettol or something like that. You know, we, we weren't used to disinfectants. No. There we are. I think that's done now. Looks, Looks great. Yeah. Perfect, perfect consistency. Pour it into this little bowl. and get my fish out of the oven. It should be done by now. Very dramatic. Like, like Frankenstein's monster found in a block of ice or the Snow Queen frozen in her palace. Yes, dear. <laughs> now, the way to tell... I haven't got a skewer. I've got a little sharp knife. Would you like that? Yeah, that'll be fine. Thank you. You just put it through the salt, right through the crust. There we are. Take it out. If it's hot at the tip then it's done. What I'm going to do is, is break off the salt crust when it's cooled a bit and all the skin and everything will come with it. Right, I think we should go and see what the lumberjacks are up to, don't you? I think we should. Good. See if they're getting ready. I hope the rain keeps off. Indeed. Be a miracle. Well, the fish is getting cold, Jennifer, so I think I'm going to give them a hand. Chop down this one for them. Right. Yeah, I'll give you a hand with that. Something oh, a bit hello. modern. Eh? Oh, God. <laughs> Well, I almost cut down that tree, but they laughed at me for using this old hand saw and said they'd finish it off. Compared to what they're using. No, look! Timber! That's my tree. Look out! There's another two coming down over there. Yay! Oh, Timber! <laughs> Timber! Uh, 
Last log of the season, Jennifer. You are a lumberjack. And you're a okay. okay. Come on, Tug. Oh. Yes, good boy. She was all night, said to sleep all day. Sooner her than me. Damn madges. Let's get out of here. Here we are. Look how that's come off, you see. Yes, it's, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, the goodies sealed in. Mm. Pretty chick chicks. Yes, that's yes. That right. lovely. Well, that will set them up a treat, I think. Right, let's escape. Yes. Wild watercress moose, a peppery bite for the logging types. <laughs> Fresh sea trout sealed in salt and a beurre blanc, irresistible combination. Gulo <laughs> pot, French inspiration, hearty vegetables and traditional stuffing. <laughs> Crispy crunchy peaches with a hint of Cointreau. Simply the bad. Well, how many thousand tons was that, Doc, out of that? Five and a half, mate. Five and a half thousand yeah. tons. Well, there we are. Oh, Five well, and a half thousand. Cheers. 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 Well, Jennifer, I think this is one cooking experience that you'll be glad to see the back of. I will. Wet, wet, wet. <laughs> midges, midges, midges. But nice people. Sweet people. With nice habits and got no money at all. <laughs> <laughs> and they all said it was lovely last week. Well, yes, I mean, it's always beautiful the week you haven't been there, isn't it? But <laughs> the advantage of the wind is it keeps the midges away. Don't so. like midges. No, I'm not fond of them myself. Freezing cold winds. Well... And people come here to stay, you know. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I had a, a lot of fun. I don't think you enjoyed the adventures as much as I did, but I had a lot of fun. You got jolly cold in the middle of the river. I know, but it did have its incentives. <laughs> you had the fish. <laughs> and the fish, yes, quite. <laughs> and uh, I must say, the fish here is wonderful. I'll give it that. Yes. Anyway, well done. Well done. Very good help. And to Bonnie Scotland. Aye. Well, we've come to cook your harvest supper for the end of this particular lot. And I gather one of you's got a croft we can use to cook it. Yep, that's me. Hey, Green, would you be a dear and show us the way? You could pop on the back of my bike. Yep. That'd be great. Would you be happy there? That should be. OK. Be comfortable. Comfortable? Hang on, because there's nothing to hold you there if we go off to a nasty bump. OK. She took it off so that handsome young men would have to hang on to her. <laughs> Yep, that's great. This is running so on the board. That's it. That's not bad. Damn it. Oh, it's a wonderful place to be. Yep.
Good heavens, look at the kitchen. It's fast. They must say it's very well equipped. Yeah, it's rather yeah. jammy I, for a craft. I thought it would be just a sort of little, you know, one of those little kofa things. Anyway, what I'm going to make is a good hearty pulo pot, that, that wonderful nourishing dish uh, invented by Henry of Navarre because he wanted all his subjects to have a chicken in their pot every Sunday, which was a good idea. And I think it two thirds white wine to a third good white wine vinegar. Yeah. And a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'm just going to put this on and cook it until the liquid has reduced and just moistens and barely covers the shallots. And Jennifer's doing all sorts of things. I'm doing a large luscious pudding for the nice uh, loggers. What I've done is I've got these little peaches. I've taken the stones out and peel them. And what I'm going to do now is make a lovely paste to put in the cavities. Now I've got these ratafia biscuits, which I shall pound into a powder. What is the difference, really, between a ratafia biscuit and a macaroon? You yeah. say ratafia and I say ratafia. Well, indeed. <laughs> the Whichever's right correct. now, I don't know. I once had great trouble with the little ratafias because I did a receipt for a lemon posset, and that's another miracle thing, you know, where it thickens by the lemon juice, and you're meant to put the little ratafia biscuits in, and they're all meant to amalgamate. Now, I would have thought perfectly safe for anybody. And I got an infuriated letter from a reader saying that not only had he wasted two pounds of raspberries, but the, but the vicar's bridge work had been broken. <laughs> Ter- I have to hang on to it. Quite uncool. Yep, that's great. That's right. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that not bad? Charming. Lovely place. Wonderful place to be. Good heavens, look at the kitchen. It's fast. I must say, it's very well equipped. Yeah, it's rather jammy for a craft. I thought it would be just a sort of little, you know, one of those little kofa things. Anyway, what I'm going to make is a good hearty pulo pot, that that wonderful nourishing dish uh, invented by Henry of Navarre because he wanted all his subjects to have a chicken in their pot every Sunday, which was a good idea, and I think it, it worked for quite a long time. And he was killed by a crazed vegetarian. Typical. Well, he was killed. He <laughs> possibly was by a crazed vegetarian. Looking a gift horse in the mouth. Indeed. So what we're going to do now is actually stuff the chicken. And first of all, we want breadcrumbs, which I got soaked in milk, which I must squeeze out. This is just off the island. <laughs> I think they're probably too young to know the song. Yes, like policemen. Are you me so old? Well, speak for yourself. Well, I am. There we are. They're all nicely filled. And guess what I'm going to do now? Cover them in cream. What, the lumberjack? <laughs> no. <laughs> the beaches, the beaches. Well, I'm sure your pudding will be a great success. It'll be lovely and sweet, and the Scots have a very sweet tooth. They love sweet things. In fact, in the old days, it used to be their 21st birthday present to have all their teeth out so they wouldn't have any trouble with it at all. I've not heard that one, Jennifer. I think that's anti-Scots propaganda. No, you? no, no. I've often heard it, really. Now, I cover this fine mess in more demerara. Rather like a... A brulee. Now it's fun time. I've got this lovely little instrument. What is that? It's my blowtorch. There's no grill here. No. I don't know how to use them, but we'll try. Now, no. I wonder if you would... I'm going to hold it. Would you light it? Um, yes, Jennifer. I'm slightly frightened of it. You're slightly frightened of it. I'm at the sharp end. Just call me Rome, dear Nero, <laughs> yes, quite. 
Do the watercress mixture. And make sure you fold it in well. And you must use a metal spoon for it. Jennifer, just behind you, there's some gelatin softening. You wouldn't be an angel and pass it to me, would you? Yes, of course. All nice and liquid. Good, lovely. Just put it down there, that's great. Just drizzle it in. Fold it in as you go. So it doesn't have a chance to set. And now, here I've got some little moulds. There we are. And I've just lined each of them with some cling film so that when the mousses are set, they will come out easily. And I'm just going to spoon the mixture into the moulds. Dainty little creatures for the tough old lumberjacks. They're not as sort of big and brawny as I expected them to be. I thought they'd be sort of... Ugh. Well, I think it's the... Um, they you all use chainsaws now. They don't need the muscle. No, they don't yeah. need the brawn. They just go... Bzzz <coughs> everywhere. <coughs> what are you going to do with all those veg? They're going, they're going in to join my chicken. And they'll be the vegetable that goes with it. And by the time these are cooked... And the zest of a lemon. I had a terrible feeling we weren't going to find any lemons. But luckily there were plenty. Well, I think they're not as barbaric up here as you think they are, Jennifer, in among the hill tribes. Uh, there we are. And the juice of half a lemon. There we are. Mix that all up. And now I'm going to mix in the watercress. Quite a lot of watercress. See how small the leaves are on that. But they do have a wonderful flavour. They're sort of member of the nasturtium family. Peppery? Yeah. And I've got some egg whites that I've beaten already. Whisk them a bit more. There you are. You see, it's nice and stiff here. Stiff peaks. And I'm going to fold this in to the watercress mixture. And make sure you fold it in well. And you must use a metal spoon for it. Jennifer, just behind you, there's some gelatin softening. You wouldn't be an angel and pass it to me, would you? Yes, of course. All nice and liquid. Good, lovely. Just put it down there, that's great. Just drizzle it in. Fold it in as you go. So it doesn't have a chance to set. I thought we might go and try a hand at a little fishing. Pretty do. Well, I thought you'd like to come too, as chaperone. It's very wet. Well, you can sit under an umbrella or something. Come on, be a sport. Lovely, lovely. What next? Is it all right if I try a bit of fishing? Yes, let's see what we can catch. Oh, it's very foolhardy. Well, not if I catch a fish, it won't be. Don't fall in! Now, I'll try not to. Not had a lot of practice at this. Well, I'll help you with your casting. OK, right. so if you take the rod in your right hand and take the slack in your yes. left, let me show you how the action works. So if you pull it back, and you count to two when it comes back, and you shoot it out. What is he doing? Have you got the action? <laughs> yes, he's teaching me how to fish, Jennifer. Comfortable about it? Yes. This wind doesn't it's help. It's about to but, right, drown now, you. Push it out. Now leave it out. Let the fly come round. Keep a firm hold of this and the tip down slightly. You've got to stay in contact with the fly. Right. Would you like a go at this, Jennifer? I don't have weight, as I'm glad to say. <laughs> oh, I just need a little practice. Uh, yes. What are, you, <laughs> what are you finishing off? I'm about to put the butter into my beurre blanc. Whisk into it these cubes of cold butter, a handful at a time. The, the trick of this sauce is that you must wait until the first lot are finished and mixed in properly before you add another handful. And just keep whisking it. 
patience and perseverance made a bishop of his reverence. Is that what your nanny used to say to you? No, I've never heard it before. My nanny is more likely to say, <laughs> didn't you have a, an English nanny? Yes, I, I didn't care for her at all after, after our lovely Chinese armour, this nasty, starched monster, and to us with this terrible smell, probably Dettol or something like that. You know, we, we weren't used to disinfectants, you know? There we are, I think that's done now. Looks, Looks great, yeah. perfect, perfect consistency. Pour it into this little bowl. And get my fish out of the oven, it should be done by now. Very dramatic. Like, like Frankenstein's monster found in a block of ice, or the Snow Queen frozen in her palace. Yes, dear. <laughs> now, the way to tell, I haven't got a skewer. I've got a little sharp knife, would you like that? Yeah, that'll be fine, thank you. 